Hello, welcome to part one of a new series on a very interesting Kaggle competition, abstraction and reasoning. I think it's a great competition to get into if you're interested in machine learning, data science, or algorithms in general, because it is so different from other problems we're used to seeing in this field. Also, there's a bunch of colors and interesting shapes, so that brings a little joy to my life now that I mostly stay at home like a lot of other people. In this video, I'm going to go through what the competition is about and how we can get started. If you're new here and you find this interesting, please subscribe and like this video as that will really help this channel. Okay, let's get started with the overview. Our goal in this competition is to create a model that uses very little training data, around 2 to 5 per task, to be able to predict the output of an unseen input. Each task can be solved with abstract reasoning, which is kind of like those IQ tests where we are given only a few patterns and are asked to fill an unseen input with the same reasoning. The host, Francois Cholet, sorry if that pronunciation is terrible, is the creator of the Curious Neural Network Library. And his motivation in hosting this is to get us thinking about ways to develop more human-like intelligence. So the problem with current machine learning is that it's too data savvy to resemble human intelligence, requiring hundreds and thousands of training examples only to make sense of similar patterns. Whereas in a human recognition training, if I show someone who's never seen music instruments before just a couple pictures of a violin compared with a guitar, they'll most likely learn how to differentiate between the two right away. We'll walk through what data files are provided to us and then take a look at what's in the training set and how it's formatted. We're given three folders, training, evaluation, and test, as well as the sample submission.csv. Inside the training folder, we have 400 JSON files each source a task object. Each task object consists of two fields, train and test. I made a copy of the starter notebook and made a few edits to the plot function, and you'll be able to find a link to the notebook in the description below. This task variable is just one example from one of the JSON files. Both train and test are made up of a list of what's described as a pair, where a pair is a dictionary with two keys, input, which stores the input grid for the pair, and output, which stores the output grid. A grid is defined as a rectangular matrix or a list of lists of integers between 0 and 9 inclusively. The smallest grid can be 1 by 1 and the largest grid can be 30 by 30. Each of these integers represents a color. So these input and output matrices can be plotted for us to see the transformations. So as you see, this is the visual representation of the task pairs above. We have two pairs in the train field and one pair in the test field. The evaluation folder is made up of 400 different tasks from the 400 tasks in the training folder. They're in the exact same formats and are just provided for us to evaluate our algorithm once we have trained one with a task in the training folder. Now the task objects in the training and evaluation folders are both going to provide us with the output value for the pair in the test field. This is the ground truth value that we'll be able to compare with to get a score for our algorithm without making a submission to the leaderboard. The metrics in the competition is that we're allowed to make three predictions per task. And if one of them matches the actual value exactly, then the loss is zero for this task. And otherwise, if none of the three predictions is an exact match, the loss for this task is one. Then the leaderboard score is calculated by the average loss of 100 unseen tasks. One caveat that definitely got me confused at first was this test folder. The task folder consists of 100 tasks in the same format as tasks in the training and validation folders, with both training and test fields except we'll not be given the output values in the test field because this is what we're trying to predict. And at first I was like, well, we're still given the train field and the test input, and these tasks are not that hard for humans to solve, so why can't we just solve it ourselves and hard code the output values in? Then I did some digging and found that this test folder is actually just a dummy folder that's provided just to help us build our end-to-end -end prediction pipeline. It's just 100 tasks out of the 400 in the evaluation folder, and with the output taken out from the test field. What this means is that unlike many other Kaggle competitions, where we are evaluated by the values in our submission.csv, in this competition we must submit the entire algorithm for evaluation. So if we take a look at what's in the submission interface, 
we don't see a field where we can just select a local prediction file for submission. Instead, we must have our algorithm in a Kaggle kernel and submit that kernel. Then what's probably going to happen is that these test JSON files in the test path are going to be replaced by some hidden tasks, but our generalizable algorithm should still be able to make predictions on them. Then it's going to generate a submission.csv that none of us can see, and that will be scored by the leaderboard. To get things started, we'll want to use the starter code notebook the host provided, which provides a skeletal end-to-end -end prediction pipeline. Then we'll just need to replace this dummy algorithm in here with our own algorithm. Commit this version, go to output when it finishes running, and then submit the output. I'll put the link to this original starter notebook also in the description below, but you can also easily find it in the notebook section in this competition. That's basically all you need to understand to get things started. You can also check out this GitHub repo. This is a repo that the host provided as a useful tool to play around with and complete some tasks ourselves. If you download the repo and go to apps, open this.html file, then you'll be able to see this interactive interface where you can select a random task, look at the pair in the train field, and make predictions on the test field yourself. It really helps to get the wheel spinning once you see these pictures and observe how you as human intelligence are solving the problem. What I find very interesting about this competition is that most tasks are easily solvable by humans. And we ourselves can observe how we reason about each of these tasks. So even though computers are doing a pretty terrible job at this, we know for sure that this problem is solvable but we just need to figure out the gap between the computer's reasoning power and our reasoning power. If we're successful in doing this, the implication would be way better performing machines on tasks humans can easily do. For example, automated cars, image recognition, text-to-speech, and a lot more exciting stuff. Okay, that is it for this video. Hope you find that interesting. Please stay safe and hope you can find something that you enjoy. See you next time.